Seattle. From the King Northwest Network. From the nation's capital. From News Center 5, Don Matson. Good morning. It's Friday, December 3rd. To hear the top news stories in Salt Lake City, Barney Clark, the world's first artificial heart recipient, reported doing very well. We'll get the latest from Aaron Brown in Salt Lake in just a couple of minutes. The outgoing director of Whoops, Bob Ferguson, says the next six months will determine whether the supply system goes broke or moves ahead to finish at least three nuclear power plants. Tornadoes that ripped through Illinois and Arkansas overnight killed at least six people and injured as many as 25. Details coming up shortly, but first we're going to check the forecast, and quite a forecast we have this morning. Tidal flood warnings. Water will be a foot and a half above the normal high tide at 7.15, which will cause some flooding. Rain chance 100%. Warm, though. Highs in the mid-50s. Windy. Southerlies 15 to 30 miles per hour. Gusty at times. Tonight, 90% chance of rain. Lows in the lower 40s. Tomorrow, decreasing showers. Highs near 50. Right now, light rain in the area, 56 degrees wind from the south at 22, gusting up to 34. Barometer 29.54 and rising. The relative humidity is 83%. Now let's see how things are going for commuters this morning. Here's Sarah Johnson. There's lots of standing water on the roadway. Visibility is limited. The rain is falling hard, and with temperatures in the 60s, it's a super tropical day here in Seattle. There was a temporarily... A blocked roadway at 2nd Avenue South in Rainier. The northbound lanes of Rainier blocked there for some time during a fire. They have been reopened to traffic. Sarah Johnson, News King, Sky Twin Traffic. 61-year-old Des Moines dentist Barney Clark is in critical but improving condition this morning, a little more than 24 hours after an artificial heart was implanted in his chest. Aaron Brown's been in Salt Lake watching Clark's progress, and we're going to join him now for an update on his condition. Good morning, Aaron. What's happening? Good morning, Don. We just talked to the hospital. Dr. Clark is described this morning as doing well. He is still listed in critical condition, as I believe you indicated. That is as expected. Indeed, there is very little that the hospital has to tell us this morning that was not anticipated. He had a fitful night. They describe it as having slept on and off, tended to wake up when the nursing staff came in to work in the area. It was it's sort of like the uh, waking you up to give you a sleeping pill kind of problem that people in the hospital are familiar with. His complaints are very typical of people who have just undergone major surgery. He continues to be troubled by a sore throat. There is a tube down his throat, the respirator tube. It's about the, uh, the size of your finger going around, and it's uncomfortable. He also is very thirsty. Anyone who has had major surgery knows uh, that feeling you come out of surgery thirsty and they won't let you have anything to drink and indeed Dr. Clark has not had anything to eat or drink he is still on an IV his surgeon Dr. DeFries will be in this morning to take a look at him the most encouraging news here is that there are no signs of infection no sign of pneumonia he continues to be responsive though responsive uh, should not be interpreted as, uh, as uh, overly communicative he uh, does respond in hand pressure that sort of thing, uh, and can indicate uh, a couple of things, but it, it's really, he is still not terribly alert, uh, uh, still under uh, sedation quite heavily. That is his condition this morning, and no one expects it to change a great deal today. They are uh, very encouraged at the medical center in Salt Lake, and they continue to watch him very closely. Okay, well, thank you very much, Aaron, and uh, we'll be hearing from you as you get back to Seattle and get a complete report on exactly what's happened down there. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Don. Good morning. Okay, so the vigil for Barney Clark goes on in Utah and here in the Puget Sound area. Julie Blacklow visited with Clark's son, Gary, as he waited for more news about his father.